With Beyonce recently stealing the crown at the top of the country charts and Lana Del Rey announcing an upcoming country album as well, you can place a safe bet on more artists from the central pop and hip hop communities donning their cowboy hats. With that in mind, you're gonna to want to get clued up on how to make a successful country track. Let's dive into it. I never knew I would enjoy creating country music as much as I did today. In this episode, we're going to cover the instruments used, the playing techniques, and you'll want to get familiar with the arrangement style. So let's get started with the strings. There's a lot of strings used in the country genre. So first find yourself a nice acoustic guitar. Now bear in mind for the top half of this project, I've been playing the guitar as MIDI only, but if you frequently use samples, then just research the following key terms in your sample library. If you're not a guitarist or don't have one to hand, I would strongly suggest the Ample Sound Collection. Whatever you choose, you'll want something that has first a nice single plucked tone, and something that sounds good as a strummed instrument. Following this, you may want to add a banjo or lap steel, something with a brighter, more metallic sound for alternating sections of your song. I think it's a gorgeous addition to also include a slide guitar, I've used this harmonic preset inside Ample Sound's semi-hollow guitar. You can definitely use any bass VST, but I think an upright bass brings a charming stylistic to the genre. The built-in upright in Ableton is actually quite nice too, but again, I have something here in Ample Sound which will fit snug between my other Ample instruments. And then finally, a violin or string sample as well. Then there's rhythms and percussion. You're going to want to find samples, impact VSTs, or just record your own foot stomps. You'll want a selection of shakers and percussion, but it really is fair game as to what you choose as they'll be fairly low in the mix. And where would the modern country song be without the infamous hey or ho drenched in reverb? So with the instruments readied, let's look at the play style and arrangement. For this example, we're in D major as we're taking inspiration from Beyonce's Texas Hold'em, but most country songs are written in C, E or A major as well. It's quite up tempo this one and we're at 110 BPM. Many chart-topping artists like to drop the listener straight into a preview of the chorus. This is going to be a very full loop featuring a lot of your string instruments. Start by creating a strumming pattern with a sustained open fill. We're using the chords D major, G major, and A major. The chords usually look like this, but in ample sound, you have the ability to strum the chords with just one note. You can use the same chord progression with a palm muted sound in the verse. Now you want an acoustic lead sound for a counter melody. In the chorus, I keep this more simple than the verse. reason being in the chorus it will just be in competition with busy banjo notes. With that said, opt for a nice banjo sound, I've gone with the Opus Goliath banjo. Create a repeating pattern with the banjo, but try to be in keeping with the playing style of an actual banjo player. That's what gives it its realism. Banjo players often utilize the claw technique of playing the thumb down on the first beat and picking the fingers on the upstrokes. So start with your lowest notes and then interplay the following notes before returning to the thumb or first note. This will give you the best performance. When we dive into the first verse, you'll want to tease the listener with the banjo we just heard. Think of this section as a transition section to removing the banjo in the pre-chorus or bridge. I have a whole video on successful transition techniques. Check it out after this episode. So I've actually pitched the banjo down, as you can probably tell, on this frozen and flattened layer. 
And that's just because the banjo in this VST didn't go low enough. But on the above line, what you can see here is a D followed by three consecutive E notes and then the D. But on those E's, I've actually added a pitch bend. This is going to give a very human feel to the banjo playing. Let's add that to the previous banjo and some acoustic guitar muted, as we mentioned before. It's really playful, it's super fun. I absolutely adore it. We're gonna have kind of a walk-in bass line. This track in particular has a bit of a 12 bar blues feel. If that means nothing to you, don't worry. Here's what the MIDI looks like. It's a super upbeat pattern. And as before, the notes just follow that of the chords that we've heard. This bass line isn't gonna change all that much throughout the song as well. You're probably pleased to know you can just loop it right up. So those string elements in the chorus sound like this. Little change from the banjo here. And then back to what we heard. In the verse, we have a slight change because we're switching from that open strum guitar to that more muted strum guitar. But all of those string instruments sound like this. nice to end on a little stab. The stomps in this track are by far the easiest. You can pretty much arrange these and repeat them throughout the song, leaving the odd area to give your listener a break. On every first beat of the four bars, just add an impact sound or sub just to anchor the one of the bar. The shaker is going to be another instrument that plays all the way through, but as you can see, I subtly change it throughout. Sometimes it's a little bit more full in the chorus, as you can see by these layers here, but through the automation, I'm also taking it down in dynamic in the verses, bringing it back up in the pre and then down in the second verse, but adding more layers. With the shaker, I'm actually using Skucker from Clev Grand. I love this company and they have just a whole roster of different percussive shaker sounds. So you can see that in the first chorus, I'm actually using two layers. But in verse two, I'm using three layers and it sounds like this. Not all that different, but there's just a little bit of top end in there. So that's the chorus and verse covered. Now let's look at how the pre-chorus is arranged and it feels like it has such a memorable string hook. But first, let me tell you about today's sponsor, DistroKid. I have new music coming out with my pal, Daniel G. Harmon, and I'm not kidding. From start to finish, the whole process of creating a song and then scheduling it took about 48 hours. We caught a vibe with an initial piano loop. I finished off the track in about a day. We used DistroPick to create the artwork and we scheduled that track for March 8th. And we use splits to ensure that we share the royalties. It couldn't be easier. And that's why they're my go-to distributor. If you want to get 7% off your first year, then just use the link in the description below. So the pre-chorus. In the pre-chorus, you can return with that muted strum sound that we had before. And we can use the upright bass once again as well. But this time round, we're going to add some slide guitar, some strings and some new percussion. So the slide in country is iconic. I think we can all agree. So you want to make sure you get this right. Now you can just use a sample. What I've done is use the ample sound semi hollow, but I'm using the harmonic ambience preset. The key is really not to overplay and you want to make sure you get those kind of bend notes in. So I've used this same preset on two tracks because it doesn't overlap very nicely. And on some of the notes, you can see that I'm doing this kind of like pitch bendy thing. as I'm taking down the volume of the instrument. And with this note, we actually begin with some pitch bend as we go into the second note. 
And that slide sound is iconic. Spend some time getting this right because the same goes for the strings. Down here, I've got that similar slide tone with the strings and I actually really did struggle with this. So I just took this violin loop that I found on Splice and then pitched it up to semitones. And from here, I was able to chop it by hand and re-pitch the parts or re-warp the parts, as you can see there, to make sure that it fit my melody. Let's play that with the other elements that we've just heard. Concluding the second half of your pre-chorus, we've already got the shaker, we want to introduce the rest of your percussion. Now this can act as a precursor to your final chorus where you can add all of this back in atop of your foot stomps for extra energy. I would suggest familiarizing yourself with the train beat. It's a style of country drumming and this is gonna be significant to the overall sound and it can be played on the snare as a brushed instrument or as an assortment of percussion like we have here. So I mentioned earlier, we're also using another Clev Grand plugin. I have a whole video on this plugin because I thought it was a game changer. This is gonna be for all of my brush stuff. So I'm just using the pizza box preset, a little bit of high EQ, and that's just doing some offbeat stuff here. Then we have some more brushes underneath. And there's that kind of train beat that we spoke about. Chaka -ch -chaka 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 -chaka. More Borschter underneath that with some different sounds. Really important to start panning some of this percussion. And underneath we have some claps. I'm using the free Palmas Max for Live device that we've seen in previous videos, but I'm freezing and flattening that just so we don't have any reverb there. And then using two great big claps from Splice at the end, just to signify a full stop at the end of the bar. So let's put all of the percussion, including the foot stomps together. Now let's introduce the new percussion. Great, remember big foot stomp on the one there that you just heard. And from time to time, it's important to just add a sprinkling of those atmospheric transitional elements that we spoke of before. So here I have a couple of riser sounds. And then I also have a big foot stomp. It's actually a gunshot sample kind of hidden as a foot stomp. But I've coupled that with an electronic element that you wouldn't normally think about in country. And that's this big sub drop. It's going to really signify the one as we go into the pre-chorus. You can see that it's got a little bit of automation just here in terms of its EQ. And it sounds like this. And that just gives a really solid anchor to the first beat, makes it feel really full and warm. Finally, we're going to go on to a new verse where we're going to use a sparse number of elements that you've already made, but this time we're just going to add a B minor chord to just add some tension and color to your arrangement. So we start exactly as we did before with the D major and we play that for four bars. So we're still on that D major here. Let me open ample sound so we can see it better. Then we go to the G major and then we just go back to that D major. But here comes that B minor change. B minor there to the G major, then back to the D major. So you can forget about the A this time around. Same again, B minor. Easy peasy. And you just wanna make sure that your lead guitar follows that. Let's look at the notation here. Really, really simple, super playful. This is all gonna to build towards your next chorus, but make sure that you have those ho and hey vocals there at the ready on the ones too. So copying and pasting these sections to ensure that you have a climax at the most energetic of chorus with all your percussive trimmings and string accompaniments, it's gonna have you finalizing a chart country hit 
in no time. Don't forget that this whole Frozen project and stems are available at the Patreon if you want to dive in a little deeper, maybe couple it with this episode once again. But thank you so much for swinging by. Great work today. It's quite a big video. I'll catch you next time. <coughs> I was holding that in. <laughs>